Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Chelsea. Um, I have done some easy peasy math reviews in the past, but I've never done one over first grade, so I thought I would take the time today to show you that. I've done second grade, and then I believe fourth grade. So, but today I would stop and show you the first grade book so you can find out everything that's inside it. I will say that you can get all of this online on Easy Peasy for free as a printable. Um, my printer, very sketchy, and it actually recently broke, and also just the ink. Whew. So this is not that much. I think it's eight, eight or nine dollars on Amazon. I don't have to print anything off that way. Easy Peasy um, is probably my favorite math curriculum for elementary school. I love it. And they also, so you would do your day, and your days are numbered, day six, day seven, and then they also have things relating to it on their website, so you could have your kid do the page on here and then do the website lesson, or vice versa, or you could just use one or the other. We actually, a lot of times, just do the workbooks. Um, because we do a lot of other math games and math activities on our own where I feel like I don't really need the website But if it was something they were stuck on I would have them go and look so I'm gonna flip the camera around and let you guys see what's in this book Okay, so this is the first grade level and it covers number concepts patterns addition measurements geometry fractions money graphs subtraction and time My five-year-old is currently working on this um, but just whatever age that your first grader is, it is fine. So it'll even tell you what, what is in each lesson. And this got scribbled on by my three-year-old. But this kind of gives you an idea of what to expect in your lessons. And it goes to day 180. I'm just going slow so you guys can really really see what's in there because I enjoy that and then when you first open it up you have this let's get my camera math facts checklist so you want to make sure they have these memorized and then you can check them off so my five-year-old just started this this week and she knows some um, so we checked these off last week. She had to work on this one. She had to work on remembering that one, but she finally got it. We checked it off. So next week we're going to work on this and I could probably push her further and be like, Hey, let's memorize, you know, all of this in one week, but she's five and I'm really just having her do school because she wants to. Um, at that age, I don't push. So she had a lot of fun doing this. I would have her, I'd practice with her and then she would run and tell a different family member and come back to me for another one, run and tell family members and she would just go around the house telling all her sisters and brother and dad. So she had a lot of fun with that. So you can see the facts that it covers. Okay, then this is just review at the beginning of the book. It does get harder, don't worry, like any book it has to start off with review. So you are just looking at the number, coloring how many you have and you are following the numbers. And then this was fun, and we were doing our ocean study, like the end of it when we did this, so she thought that was so fun to trace that turtle. And this was great practice. She got stuck somewhere in the 30s, and so we had to count out loud to get her there. You're gonna go over your odds and evens. She figured out the trick, though, of, well, Mom, I can just skip one and go down. But still, she said all the numbers out loud, and uh, so she had fun doing this. Now, she got tired right here. She decided she did this page and wanted to do more. So we went on, and she got tired right here. I said, that is fine. You can stop. We'll finish this next time, because again, she's five. Okay, so that's how far we've got, but I have done this book before with uh, my now eight-year-old. So anyway, odds and evens. And I think Easy Peasy and Story of the World are the only curriculums I've ever bought twice in a row. <laughs> so, you know I like it. Covering patterns. Okay, we'll speed it up a little bit here. Patterns, counting by twos. And I like how they don't like do it so much, like so repetitive that your kid is just so bored, but it does come back to it. So you'll do it for a couple of days, leave it, do something else for a couple of days, leave it, 
do something else and you just don't get bored, but then it'll bring it back. Like right when you think, hey, I haven't done something in a while, well there it'll be again. And it has a lot of um, drills, but not like all page, all day boring drills, just at the bottom of pages, or it'll have like rows, I think this first grade one has rows, um, where you do a row a day with whatever other sheet you were doing so that you just don't forget. Looks like she came and answered one way back here. So, using your number line there, counting things to add, again, counting things, and I like how it's black and white. I know some people want color, but then my kid has the freedom to color. So, I think that's fun. My eight-year-old was not a fan of coloring, really, so I would color his pages. <laughs> I like coloring. So this is day 30. Just in case you can't see, you're adding sums up to 8. You're counting backwards from 20. It looks like you're counting um, by by ones, I guess. Yep, counting backwards. And then you're adding sums up to 7. Counting by 10s. Counting by 10s. Now you're adding up to 9. Now you're adding up to 10. Just some more addition practice more addition practice oh fun little maze right here and more practice all right see now we're back to odd and even so day 42 so you skipped quite a little bit of time there now you're on to your ordinals counting by tens Okay, this is what I was talking about, about when I said the row. Um, so your kid would do one row. So on day 46, they would do one row plus day 46. And then day 47 a row plus whatever day 47 was. And then you get the point 48, 49, 50. I like that because then they can do something fun. Like here's what they're doing on day 46 is just patterns. But then they're going to come over here and do just one row. So it keeps it fresh in their mind. It's getting them to make sure it is memorized, but they're getting to do something else also. I like that a lot. So more patterns, patterns, comparing numbers, which is larger, which is smaller. Here's some more rows to go with your upcoming week. More comparing numbers, and at the bottom you can tell, I like how they do that, like so this is comparing numbers, and here you are comparing your sums. Here, you're writing these numbers in order, so it's not just the whole page is one thing, and I like that. And it's just, I feel like your kid knows there's one page. Okay, that's great. I can get that done. Okay, on day 56, we are measuring. Here it is in inches, and this is always fun. Color the boxes. How tall are they? Talking about feet and inches and yards and all that stuff addition, a fun little maze type thing, more rows, more addition, you're filling in the blanks here. All right, reading a temperature. Fun, fun, and it looks like here you are filling in the temperatures. You can just see that they keep it very fun. It's not too intense. It switches things up often enough to where we don't get bored. It keeps your drills, but not in a way where it's like drill and kill. You know, it's fun still. So here you are still comparing numbers. Now we're going back to odd and even, day 67. Back to ordinal numbers. Patterns and addition. That's a cute page. <laughs> okay, matching your shapes. Matching shapes. Matching shapes. So, oh, that's fun. You get to cut out and do a little puzzle. So you can see how it goes through, and I'm going to kind of just flip here. Here's where we get to fractions on day 82, and here you would have been doing equal parts. So you're kind of starting fractions day 81, 83. This is fun when my son did this. He liked it so much that then we went and got our dice out and let him throw it and do extra problems because he had a lot of fun doing that. Counting one half. Coloring your fractions, fractions in addition, fraction words, pennies. So now we're on to money. It's day 91. 
lots of money, but you stop and you count backwards. Getting some different types of problems in here. You're doing addition. Lots of counting money. More money. Which money is bigger? Worth more. Addition, addition. These would be your rows for the next week. Coin towers, fun stuff. Now we're getting into graphs on day 107. Okay, so lots of fun graphs. Over here you would match the sum to the correct problem. Your rows for the week, more graphs. And more graphs. My kids always love graphs. So fun. Okay, so here now you're going back to using your number line sum to subtract. You're going back and reviewing that subtraction again here. So we're on day 119 so far. Getting back into our fractions again. So you can see how it just kind of like weaves through everything to make sure you know it, but not get you bored and annoyed. My kids seem to, in math, they get things pretty quick and they want to move on. Like, I get it. Why am I still working on it? Okay, so it started fact families around day 133. And then counting is subtract. More fact families and then a subtraction maze. Lots of subtraction. Money work. Money work. Money work. Another graph with some rows for the week. Graphs and fractions. Now my book's going to start flipping over on me. These are always fun. My son likes these. Little, like kind of like a maze. More fractions. Okay, so time starts on day 151. Don't think y'all can see that. That's why I'm telling you. And then you have your rows for the week. Lots of time. And I always get out, I get little clocks from like the Dollar Tree and let them also create the time on those little paper clocks. Or you could make one with a brad and some, you know, cardstock. And then of course, if you go to the Easy Peasy website, they will have games to go with all of this stuff. So if my kid is really enjoying it or needs extra help, <laughs> either way, we can go to that website. And I like how the um, resources are right there for us on that website. I don't have to go digging on Google. So we are on day 166 right now. We're almost to the end. You can see just lots of reinforcing that addition and subtraction, keeping things fresh with new topics, putting numbers in order here with fractions on that side. And remember this is like one a day, so 174, 175, and then they can color it. Go on the website for extra practice, just whatever you want to do. Bringing those fact families back, we're on day 178, 179, and the last day, 180, you have a math crossword. And then you've completed it. Yay! Okay guys, so that's it for that easy peasy grade one math workbook. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I would love to chit chat with you guys about it. Like I said, I love easy peasy. It's my favorite elementary curriculum. This is not sponsored in any way. Buy it all myself. And it's just something that my kids really enjoy. When my two big girls got too old for it because once they get to like sixth grade or seventh grade, it ships you out to Khan Academy, and they were very sad. They loved their Easy Peasy workbooks. It was their favorite math or favorite math workbook. So, um, yeah, we really enjoy it. If you haven't found a math that works for you, I would give it a try and see if it's a good fit for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.